I'd like to call this uh, November meeting of the Intermountain Humane Society Board of Directors to order at 6 30 p.m. Um, start by reading the mission statement. <clears throat> IMHS serves animals and people by offering programs that promote animal health and responsible pet stewardship and foster compassion towards animals. There was a uh, a motion to approve um, last month's minutes that was sent by email, but we did not have enough votes by email to approve the minutes. So I'll take a vote in person. All those in favor of approving the minutes, just say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, the minutes from the previous month, 15th. Uh, business update, the only uh, thing we voted on offline was the uh, approval to uh, on October 24th for part of to proceed with ordering the logo wear, right? it's just logo apparel. And that's all I have for that. So we will go to Marta. I'm going to give my report and then I'll give um, Nicole's report. She's got the night off. So, um, the direct mail campaign, which is my whole life right now. And I, I hope to have it completely done, the bulk of it, um, by this time <coughs> next week at the very latest. Um, so, the first batch of the hand addressed envelopes are going to go in the mail tomorrow. And what we did with this mailing, I tried to do this smarter this year. Um, it's, this is the biggest mailing that we've done since the, the holiday campaign last year. And now that we've had a whole year to sort of watch people's giving patterns and we've done three direct mail campaigns, um, I've, cre I've created with this mailing a master prospects list. So I'm really happy about this. This is the list that I'm going to be building and working through all of next year. Um, the people that are getting this mailing are people who have actually given us a gift and responded to one of our direct mail campaigns in the last year, or who have joined us as a volunteer, or who um, have adopted an animal from our shelter. So they've had some connection with us in the last year. Um, and we've divided up, um, I've got on the spreadsheet of the prospects list, um, I've divided up the donors based on um, broad ranges of giving level. Um, and we've got reply forms that are specific to each giving level that are going to go out. Um, what we don't want to do is just send everybody the reply form that has gift options of 25 up to 100 bucks and then drive down giving from people who are more inclined to get gifts of $100 or more, for example. So um, that'll be, um, that's something that's different than what we've ever done in any um, mailing up to this point. Um, for the people that I'm calling the Vanguard donors, there are about 20 individuals who have given gifts um, in the amount of $200 or more at a time, our most significant donors. Those people got really highly customized letters. Um, and in the case of one donor who um, gives at a very high level and always earmarks for gifts for cats, she got a letter that was different from everybody else's letter that was totally focused on cats that we've helped in the last year or so. Um, I'm hoping we get a really good response um, from doing the mailing in this way, and this is going to determine how we do future mailings. Um, it will also help um, us to determine who should really be getting the newsletters. Um, there are a lot of people who have given us, a little qualified this now, but there are a lot of people who have given us gifts over the last 12 months who haven't necessarily gotten a newsletter from us this year. So. Um, in addition to members and volunteers and recent adopters, we do need to make sure the people that are donating to the shelter are getting newsletters too. So we're on that. Um, huge thanks to Ellen for your help with the mail merge and the stickering and all that too. Um, holiday newsletter, I'm hoping that we'll get these back from White Wave and get them in the mail by mid-December. Yappy hours last night, we had about 11 people there. It's a pretty good turnout. Um, the next yappy hour is going to be, I'm skipping December for the holidays, um, we'll resume in January, um, Wednesday the 9th. Um, everybody's up to date on what's going on with Kajin, relationship that I'm very excited about. Um, is that 1,030 or 1,300 that they gave us? 1,030. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Um, that project, it looks like, is going to begin in the springtime. I don't think it's realistic that we're going to break ground on that this year. We're still talking to the landlord about exactly what the configuration is going to be at the play yard. So. Um, membership program, I wanted to touch on a few things here. Um, one thing that I, I'm going to be doing to try to increase memberships in the next um, year that I would like to begin in December, and I might even make this ahead of deadline, if I can get this mailing done by Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, is to start doing monthly membership drives where I do an email blast to everyone that's adopted in the last 30 days. Um, hopefully the seed is being planted when they come into the shelter and they see our signs and they interact with us when they're actually doing an adoption. Um, but if they decide not to join at that time, they'll be getting a follow-up email inviting them to join as members. Um, Nicole and I came up with an idea um, when we have all these kids running around the shelter, um, some of whom are really, really dedicated to what they do, um, that we would like to introduce an IMHS Kids Membership Program. Offer kids 16 and under memberships for 10 bucks each. Um, and issue them IMHS Kids Membership Cards that give them um, special discounts on logo gear and also give them access to special yappy hours. We'll do maybe two yappy hours a year that are um, geared towards the kids. And these might or might or might not be kids that are volunteering for us, but certainly a lot of the kids that are involved enough to volunteer, I think we could get to join as members. So does that sound like something we can immediately implement? Yeah, I would just specify next to it that's a non-voting member. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, the other thing that I wanted to bring up is we had transitioned um, sometime this year um, into combining the couple's membership with the family membership. Um, and I'd like to suggest that we go back to offering a separate family membership for $80 because there are people that still send us $80 for family memberships and why not? So is that something that we can immediately revert to? Yeah, I can't remember why we went to the 60. Okay. I thought we were going to, it had to do It had to do with the number of votes that somebody gets and things like that. I just remember there was confusion about what is a family. And so we said basically it's, it's two adults is really what it came down to. So whether you're a family or a couple, you, you get one vote? Two. No, you get two. Two is a family. Yeah, with, or either a couple or a family, so there was really no difference between uh -huh. a family and a couple because there's no benefit okay. for being worthy. At least a voting benefit. Yeah, a voting benefit. So, because I think, what, what about the membership cards with the discounts? Um, what does a family get versus a couple? Because I guess that comes down to that would be the only thing. Yeah, it was just that they would get the two, um, two votes and the two membership cards. But so we're just sending one unless they ask, right? Yeah. Okay. I have some people that are that I know want two that I earmark they get two, but otherwise I'm sending one unless they call and ask for another one. So do we see that as an obstacle to us being able to um, have an $80 family membership then versus a $60 for a couple or family? I don't think so. I would say, yeah. that, you know, not, just specify, yeah. you know, when we're advertising um, that a family also gets two votes. It's the two adults in the house that get the two votes. Or you change the bylaws. Is this a bylaws issue? No, I don't think so. Okay. No. And on the, let me go back to the family, the discount card or whatever, is it transferable, like within a family versus a couple? If there's a couple and they have a, I don't know, a teenage son or something. I don't think we got that restricted, did we? Okay. I'm just trying to think if there's a distinction there, but really there isn't. Okay. Yeah, I would agree that there's a lot of literature that still has the $80 for family, and I see a lot. Mm -hmm. In fact, most of the time, if somebody elects the family, they pay 80 Some elect okay. the 60 because there's certain forms that say 60 Okay. So 80 it is. So are there other forms we need to update to make that just say 60 that we need to add? I had changed all of them to eliminate 80 and I'm going to change them all <laughs> back. <laughs> I said, and I'm going to, we need to modify them anyway because we're adding IMHS kids membership. That's right. Like, and we're going to start yep. um, promoting that with the kids. All right. All right, there's been website updates. Uh, we've gotten, we 
We've issued press releases about multiple things. Um, the High Timber Times featured the thrift shop anniversary party yesterday on the front page. Um, I emailed everyone about GuideStar and great nonprofits. I'm really <coughs> proud of this. This is, I, I think, a, a major achievement for us this year. I'm not going to go into this anymore unless anybody has a question about it because we've all discussed it via email. Um, but that's something that I think is really good for our, um, our status and our standing with prospective donors that we've managed to accomplish this year. Um, did go ahead and join the Evergreen Chamber of Commerce. Good. And um, Michelle, who is the executive director of the Art Valley Humane Society, um, got a lead from a lady who's in her 90s, who lives in California, who had given a couple of gifts to Art Valley Humane Society, a couple of $50 gifts, I might add. Um, that she was um, assigning someone to administer her estate. She has no family, she has money she wants to give away. We have z no idea at all how much money she could possibly have to give away. But that she was actually having trouble finding um, charities to give it to. She didn't want to give to large <laughs> national charities. She only wanted to give to small charities and she's very connected with this region for some reason. So, um, Michelle, um, specifically recommended the Connor Animal Shelter and in a Mountain Humane Society. She gave me a follow-up call to let me know about it. She said, if you can connect with this woman, make sure you send her your tax ID number. So I promptly wrote her a letter, sent her a copy of our annual review, some of our newsletters. Um, could not on whitepages.com get a phone number for her. And again, she lives in California. So um, we'll see if anything comes of it. It would be nice. Um, logo gear should actually be here Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. I will let everyone know. Um, one thing that I did mention on the report um, that I started moving on today was to try to um, get us one of those blue roadside advertising signs. They are $250 per year, and I'm wondering if that's something that we can actually prove tonight at the meeting. Yeah, that's going on. Guys, appointment. It's authorized $250 for a blue roadside sign. I is that for one direction or both directions? I am not sure. The guy's going to come out and he's going to look at where it could go. But regardless, the same guy? Uh, no, no. This is the okay. Todd's office, the TODS office. So. What kind of sign is this? Um, you know the blue road sign signs that will list businesses that are off the highway. These are the legal signs that we can actually purchase. Oh, the highway. Yeah, yeah. we okay. were sort of reprimanded for having the banner on the side of the van, which has actually been really helpful. There's been a lot of traffic in the shelter. Um, a couple of people mentioned that they didn't know we had a shelter here, and they lived in the area for years, and apparently they're not on the internet either. But um, <laughs> so I, I new people too. <laughs> well, there's new people, but you know, it, it seemed like it was extremely helpful to have that banner on both sides of the van, and. I don't have a good substitute for that with the banner being gone, but we have got to be more visible in this community. So I think it's time. I think this is something, I think we're in a financial position to be able to do this, um, $250 a year, and I think it's definitely worth it. Uh -huh. well, so, do you want to make the motion up to 500 in case it's 250 each direction? Or if she's not sure? If you, you would be willing wait? to approve that, and if or that's what we have wait, to pay. Or do wait until she finds out for sure, and we can approve it. No, let's approve up to 500, so we Marta has free. So again, I amend my motion to approve up to five hundred dollars for blue highway informational signs. And I second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank you. <laughs> Man, we're getting stuff done. All right. So um, what I envisioned on this sign was um, we want the letters to be as large as possible. So we want to say as little as possible on the sign. I'm thinking humane society thrift shop. If we throw in Intermountain, it's going to scrunch it up a lot smaller. Humane Society says animals to everybody. It'll be on two different lines, right? Humane Society on one side. That's what I'm envisioning, but I again, I'm going to meet with Brian next week. So, um, you, might not, you might want to think about a second line, IMHS thrift shop. That yes. way, for those that do know. Love it, yeah. So, Humane Society and IMHS thrift shop. It sounds like there is some confusion for people with that other one that's so close. Yeah, with the second one. Hopefully that'll be, I know well, it's We still have our chance. sign on the building that says second chance through right. too, so. Um, 
just thinking that way if anybody Hopefully there will be a connection that it's our thrift shop that supports our shelter, so. There's a sign for Zoka's near there too, so I'm not sure which side. I think Zoka's is probably past where we're going to want it. I yeah. think it is. Yeah. I think it's at seven miles. Too. I think he indicated when he called today that it's probably going to have to be like right in front of the driveway. I mean, there's not going to be. You, that's usually where they are. Yeah, I don't that's care anyway. Right. I mean, that's right. where the van's been parked, is right in front of the driveway. So um, it's close to a, it should be close to an entryway. Uh, if, yeah. if we Excellent. only have okay. the option of one, I'd like to see it actually on the coming from the side instead of coming from the family side. Completely agreed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Completely agree. Okay. Okay. Amanda Beck starts Monday. Another milestone in the clinic, over 200 surgeries. Thank you, Kathy. Um, and a really good month for starting new volunteers. We've had at least 11. I think there might have been a few that didn't get logged in my calendar, but um, there were at least 11 new volunteers that started. So, uh, good stuff. All right, um, are there any questions about my report? I'm going to morph into Nicole's report. Um, in terms of the statistics, I think we had a record-breaking month in October. Um, as far back as she could find, um, the highest intake month in previous years was 73. We had 85 for October. Um, and this is a lot of Nicole's um, initiative in filling cages, so I really appreciate that. Of those, most of those were in-state transfers. Um, we did accept um, and forge a relationship with the Humane Society of Northeast Florida. I think I've told some of you this story already. Um, they sent out a particularly desperate plea. Um, a shelter that they're working with very closely. Um, it just goes to remind us of how desperate you know, some regions are. Um, had 175 dogs in their kennels. They were euthanizing unsurrendered dogs on arrival. Didn't matter, healthy, friendly, did not matter. They had to hold stray dogs for five days. And they were so overcrowded that any unsurrendered dog was being um, euthanized on arrival. So they put out an SOS plea on a corridor all the way up through Colorado. Several shelters responded. And we said, we'll take a few. They came through, they dropped us a few dogs, they went on their other stops. And the woman called me in tears like three hours later. She said, I got a leftover dog. No one else could take this dog. What do I do? I was like, we'll figure it out, bring the dog back. If we have to call up the foster home, we can do that. And it was just so perfect because um, within 10 minutes of them getting back there a few hours later with the last dog that they had, one of the dogs they had just dropped off a few hours ago, who was already spayed, was going home. So that was just <laughs> so it worked out. Um, and we've adopted all the dogs but one so far. So, um, uh, We also participated in the PetSmart National Adoption Weekend. I think it was the weekend of the third. Four volunteers staffed our table. Four cats got adopted. Six dollars in donations. <laughs> um, they gave out some volunteer applications and some newsletters, of course. And I have handed over the blog to Nicole, who is our social media queen now. Facebook page looks so great. Um, she's going to start minimally putting the pet of the week ads that she submits to the local papers on the blog too. So, um, and I still have a July article that I need to slap up there too. Now that the blog's up and running. So, um, any questions about the supervisor's report? Okay. Thank you, Mark. Move on to that fundraising report. Good. Okay, um, I did not run a tally, but probably within $50 of being accurate. I think right now we're at $10,200 from a silent auction. We have, we have um, one person that still has to pick up the Shawnee Tea Room gift certificate, but we either had a bad number, uh, it, didn't, it did run, but it was insufficient the first time. I tried to run it again just yesterday, last night, and it didn't even take the number. So. We've got to call in, and you're going to... I think I'm going to see her on Sunday. She's okay. doing work in the shelter. Sunday. Right. Okay, so Marta knows that she's going to you know, talk to the woman about it. And she still has to pick up the one. that She had gotten two gift certificates. So that's really the only thing. And then there's one person who had bid on quite a few buy it nows that I'm having difficulty arranging a drop-off. Uh, I've got all her gift certificates. 
and so hopefully I'm not going to have to pony up on that. <laughs> she better buy them. Um, and, but I'm, I'm sure those will be played somewhere. So um, we're really close on that. And it's been a struggle. I mean, it is. We still have a few things left over, and I'm just going to, now that my guests are out of town, I'm just going to work on thank yous until I get them done. But we still have, besides the ones assigned to me, I'm working on. We still have 32 that are unassigned right now. We think that were brought into the shelter. You guys collected a lot of stuff. Sharon Thompson's thing that she collected. Some people have picked up. Others have not been picked up yet. And um, things that Lisa Dale secured for us, things like that. So I'm just going to get through them. Um, between now and the end of the weekend or even through Thanksgiving, you know, they really do need to go out as quickly as possible. So. Deb, depending on where I am with the mailing Wednesday, if I can, I'll just take the rest of them off your hands. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to start with the highest value and work down. Okay. And this includes some personal, like Lisa Zale, I, I think we owe her a big personal, you know, thank you note or something. Um, so, you know, that's, and that's not including those of us here that donated and Sharon Thompson, it does include Sharon's relatives because I thought they should get a personal letter too, whether it's from Sharon or from us. But, um, so there's some of those that could probably wait a little bit, but still we've got to just close that down. The other thing that I did notice, thank you, I did look and, um, at what Amy had put up on the site, and it looks good except we, it looks like we're still incomplete on the first, the second tier, which was the first tier that was going to be on the, the site. We have like six of them up there, and I think there's like 33, so we're missing some. I'll get that together this weekend, too. Okay. I'm not sure what happened if maybe they're businesses, but still, I think we're missing too many for that to be, even if okay. they are business partners, I think they need to mention up here. Then I don't have that, and I did not pass that to her. That's okay. She I'll, changed. She got everything else updated. Yeah, I saw it by last night, and it looks really good. And I saw your email to her, so okay. that's why I thought, let me go check it. So it sounds like we need to submit some more. Yeah, that one needs to be, you know, modified. I think we've got everything. I think we've got the right levels. The last thing that needs to be done, if anybody wants to volunteer for these, let me know. But the last thing that needs to be done is I've got all the business cards at my place all sorted out. Um, and we need to bring those in. I don't think we're going to have room on the nice business partner thing. I mean, it's I pretty good. Okay, if you can make another one, if not, I'm just going to put them on the exterior. I, know, I think you have, you know, different applications on the exterior one. But if we have to take those down and put this up, you know, we just got to display those. And I'd like to make... Are you talking about the case outside the door? Yes. Okay. I mean, worst case scenario, but that's okay. And if you don't get to it before, I'll do this, and you can get to it, and we'll change them out when you get to it. No big push on that. But just, we just, we need to put the business cards up. We'll get a good problem. Up. That's good. Yeah. It is. We have quite a few business yeah. cards, and I don't know if anybody's had any come in since then. But so those are the remaining items that we have on the salad auction, um, and it still looks like a record <laughs> breaker on that. Um, we did set, I think, you know, through email, we did all agree that we set the next year's auction so we could secure both the location and the uh, our little resident van, uh, kick to the curb. So that's been set for next year. Again, it's the, whatever it is. It's the like, 19th. It's, yeah, thank you, the 19th of October. And I will probably be scheduling, not next week, but maybe the following week, um, another fundraiser meeting just to kind of make sure that everything's done with this one, but to just, talk through, um, for anybody who's interested in joining that fundraising committee and meeting, uh, talk through the next one, which would be the May membership. If we're going to do a raffle, um, what do we need to do? How can we make it a little bit less work intensive um, than some of us? <laughs> and also, you know, I think it's time to start now. If we're going to try to secure, what we'd like us to do is try to secure some free donations. Last year we bought the five items. Um, which was still, we, we did a really good job, but it was a labor intensive with all the selling tickets, getting the tickets ready, whatever. I'd love for us to be able to get some, maybe three items and get them donated. So we really need to start working on those really before the end of the year. By next February, it's really too late for bigger corporations. So That's we'll a good see. challenge. I bet we can get three things donated. Yeah, if we get more than three, that'd be great, but it's just trying to get the... So what kind of value are you looking at for these kind of items? Haven't really talked much about it. I mean, last year we our high value item was eight hundred dollars, I think, and the lowest was a one hundred dollar bill for the five things. But um, you know, this year when we were bouncing, Winnie and I talked a little bit about it. You know, even if we five dollars might be too steep, or you know, what screwed us up was the three for ten dollars. It sold a lot of three tickets, but to be quite honest, it was you know we had some people mess up on how they sold, and mm -hmm. we had to go back and collect money from them. Which you know, if we just set it two dollars each or 
whatever. But depending on what we have coming in, it might be five dollars a ticket or just two dollars a ticket. You know, I think we'll hope that part will need to hold up until we get to the other uh, and see what we have coming in or whatever. Because I, I think we found that two months is plenty, two and a half months or so is plenty to you know sell the tickets. I, what I envision this time is um, I, it was very taxing, I think, on us trying to sell them. But I think if we, you know, go to the store a couple of times and sell there, I really oh, King that Super was sold. 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 King Supers is sold. Now yeah. we now we know. That's I right. Mean, if we can do a nicer banner this mm -hmm. time showing the prizes or whatever, I think we can really We'll just pre book like three dates to be there and exactly. sell all the tickets at King Supers. <laughs> yeah, really. Instead of, you know yeah. so that's what you know, if you have anybody has ideas and you don't you know, I mean if somebody wants to come to the next meeting and, and you don't even want to be on the fundraiser committee. Uh, that's fine, you don't have to be, but if you have ideas, or just share them with me. Do you mind scheduling a meeting now? Sure. It's just that, that time of year that, you know, dates fill up pretty quickly. Yeah, how does, I mean, what does it sound like? I, I think what we established was Tuesdays, unless we want to change it, but it seemed like Tuesdays around, what was it, six years or so, was the best time for the previous fundraising committee members. So you're thinking a week and a half or two? Oh, so it's Tuesday on the weekend. So yeah. the 27th? Yeah. At what time? But I can also do it the first week of December if that seems to work better. Um, Six o'clock, I think, is what we said before was probably the best time. So it's like 20, 25. Yeah. Does anybody have anybody feel stronger about a week later? That's okay. Because I'll be heading out. Yeah, I'm going to head out of town in December, but I haven't booked a ticket yet. I think it'll be later this month. This time. And so where do you meet? At your house or at the event? Might depend on how many people, but it's a little bit more relaxed if we can go to our house. And I think there's one thing for the, on the fundraising, but we'll need to follow up with Cheryl. Um, I think we're going to need to figure out how to use the funds from the last raffle ticket. So from the last what? The last raffle that we had. Oh. We got to find out how we can make sure that we can. Use those funds. I don't want that to jam us up on our bank accounts. So I'll follow up with her on email if I should be good today. Okay, that's it on the fundraising committee. Thank you, Deb. Next is the grant report. It's not a good report. Um, we did receive a letter from the Loretta Boyd Charitable Trust that we will not be receiving a grant this year. Um, Marta and I are going to get together in January to uh, work on a new proposal there. Grant deadline is the end of March. Um, and just before I left work today, I got a call from Debbie at Anschutz and we will not be no, receiving a grant no. from Anschutz this year. Oh, we did so good on that. They, uh, they have limited funds for animal services and they we knew donated that. a lot to uh, the, I don't remember what organization she said it was, but it was um, for wildfire relief mm -hmm. this year in August. So um, she, you know, could not speak highly enough of you, Marta, and she really, you know, spoke highly of the shelter, her time with you. Um, and she encourages us to try again. Um, the next deadline in January is too soon, she said. Uh, we should shoot for the August deadline again. Okay. What is the August? Year. Do we know? I think it it's or? the 15th. Okay. Um, so I think this, this last year we did, this year we got it out at the end of July. So we'll shoot for that again. We will keep logging compelling but, stories between yeah. now and then. Mm -hmm. So, and that's it for the grants. Uh, technology report? Yeah, um, Ken got a, a drive that was donated, the external hard drive installed today. And um, it was even taking it a step further than the old one and doing a complete Windows backup of the computer in case we ever have problems there. Um, a monitor was donated the other day. I don't know if it's been set up yet. Yeah, it's, set up now. it's set up now. I need to get rid of the old one. I'm not sure how you dispose of a monitor up here. I don't, you have a recycle trash, but I don't think it can go and recycle. No. Um, <laughs> it's it's not a good will. They quit taking TVs, but they do take <laughs> other stuff. Is there one up here? 
your health. But if you if you take it and put it in Unit 3, Daryl will take it down when he takes the goodwill stuff down. And that's for a broken one, monitor. It's not a... They take okay uh, everything so they quit taking yeah. TVs. Because I'm thinking they're, they probably take workable things, though. They, they have people work on stuff, so okay. that's why they took well, anything. That's true. And this Except they could be taking TVs, so. Huh. Okay. I'm sure don't recycle. Okay. Well, Steve, we, we're getting two other donated monitors, too, that are used, so. So, so for the next time we have a problem, <laughs> we'll have them on standby. Excellent. Yeah. Um, and then the only other thing was, uh, just the ongoing discussion of cameras for the thrift store. And um, his, I guess you guys bought a, a set at Costco, and um, we kind of want to get those installed. So what was the, what was the cost on those? <laughs> well, it kind of changed. I talked it over with Daryl, and he sort of had a change of heart on it, because it's all wired, and it would require drilling holes through walls and stuff. So. Actually returned them as yesterday. So oh, okay. I just, had, I just went ahead and bought it because it was on sale at a really good price and it's Costco. I figured it could right, it was easy to return any time. So we never even opened it; just took it back. So if we need to do that, we got to figure out another solution, wireless or something that's more expensive. Yeah. All right. Is um, he still thinking? Are you still talking to Daryl? Is he pondering over what he wants to do? Or he was asking if we can do wireless, but I haven't come up with any. Affordable solution for that. So um, I, I guess it's not urgent. Um, the the last instance was something misplaced, and um, so I, I guess my recommendation would be is let's just kind of keep looking and see what we can find for pricing, and um, you know, we can always make a motion in the middle of the month or something like that if we if we need to get funds. So uh, yeah, it can. I'm sure we'll keep researching find something of value for us. <laughs> that's it for technology. That's what's going on. I have one question on the cameras. I'm just wondering with Black Friday coming up and everything, is that, I mean, do you think you guys are close enough to know if he wants a couple of cameras? I mean, do you think we should maybe pre-approve a dollar limit in case you find the right <coughs> thing that works? Or do you think it's not going to be? Yeah, if you can pre-approve the $400, knowing that we probably won't get anything, but it was the cost of cameras would have been four hundred dollars. That was eight cameras, though. That's wired. Uh, if we go wireless, we might be able to get a couple cameras for that price or something. So that other system that we have was about three hundred and fifty to four hundred. I know that's not extremely impressive. Um, yeah, I would want to try to use that again. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think probably we just need Daryl to kind of identify how many he thinks he really needs. I mean, realistically, if we can buy with one or two, but that might be the next step is just to kind of see what he's thinking. Well, in the meantime, if you find something that you think will work, you can't hurt to put it on the wish list and see if somebody wants to donate it. Mm -hmm. You just tell me exactly what to post and I'll post it. <laughs> <laughs> um, just cut and paste well, it. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. I mean, um, well, I guess in an ideal world, we probably want four cameras, four wireless, um, a, a four camera wireless video system. Four camera wireless video system. It's not the kind of thing people it's usually have lying around. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it might be we probably won't get three or so. four offers this time, but. <laughs> so, right. and, and um, how about this? Um, can, can you just identify? a make and model of one that would, that would be work really helpful. and give that to Marta for, to put on the wish list. They're all pretty similar. So. Yeah, yeah, but just it's going to be so much easier for someone. Right. <laughs> if, if you say Amazon part number or whatever, that <coughs> so somebody will actually go ahead and get one for us. Because if I do, if it's wireless, it's probably going to be $800 or something. I'll check and see what I can find. Yeah. It's free to it's, ask. That's yeah. right. You don't ask, you don't get, right? Yep. Good idea. I think that was it. Okay. Dave, uh, operations? Hannah is the most uh, pressing thought in my mind right now. Um, did you all get the email from yesterday? Mm -hmm. 
Um, so, you know, after it seems like we've talked about the euthanasia policy for three meetings in a row now, but this may be, and we were hoping last month that it wasn't going to, uh, we wouldn't have to uh, address it soon, but it may come up with Anna because she's either going to go into a, 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 a decline that is slower or she's all of a sudden going to be real bad or maybe even a sudden death. And if it's a sudden decline, we'll be in the same situation as we were with, I um, can't remember his name now, that cat that was dead. Hoover. Hoover, yeah, mm -hmm. having the dental. So I didn't know if you wanted to discuss it tonight or if you want to continue to discuss it on email. No, or if you so had any questions. I wondered, um, could we approve give Marta and you a, a, basically a pre-approval because we know that this is going to happen. So. Yeah. I think that in my mind is probably the ideal thing to do. What bothers me the most is she's been doing very well. She's still doing very well. Uh, but she's vomiting with increased frequency and the size of the lump in her abdomen has uh, started to grow pretty quickly. And so I don't think it's going to be very long. So if that, what do you think, Marta? Um, I, I'm really glad you brought that up. Yeah, if, um, if it could be approved that um, we'll keep in touch with Dr. Dave and Kathy um, on this situation with her. And once we determine that it's time to plan for the euthanasia, if we could just proceed with it, that would be great. That would spare us from having to do email exchanges at that time. And we'll have the euthanasia form sent around, obviously. So yeah, once Kathy and Dr. Dave or one of them approves that it's time. I can reread re it. Um, I mean, uh, I think if you fill out the form and have the conditions in it mm -hmm. with which you think that, you know, if these, we expect one of these three things to happen, which would make us recommend the euthanasia. And I think if we have that form, we can approve. We can approve it with those conditions, so that if okay. those, if any of those, so we'll specific, go ahead and send the form around. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then okay. We can vote on it and be ready for it. Because basically, what we want is if you come in and find her in distress, in shape, we can move on. Yeah. Okay. Not have to worry about trying to get in touch with all of us or yeah. any of us for that matter. Yeah, and it will give everybody, hopefully, a little bit more time to research it and okay. understand what they're voting for. Hopefully we have enough time for everybody. Is the cat being kept in the surgical suite now? Or? No, she's, she's in a cat colony. Okay, I didn't see her today, so I was wondering if she was. I saw her. She was laying on a pillow on the desk when I left. <laughs> I meant to mention on the surgical, I think um, Kathy said that you're keeping some animals there overnight. Is that normal? Cats sometimes yeah. after surgery. On, on surgery night, yeah. Because that room in the back isn't technically getting heated. Oh, we got an electric heater. So you got a floor heater for it? Yeah, yeah. it works really well. Uh, just to make sure you know. Yeah, absolutely. Hey. Thank you. Yeah, um, the rest of the room is kept at 55, but the back one doesn't have a heater. Right. It was comfortable when I went in there after surgeries um, on Sunday morning. Um, and all the animals were up front in the surgeries. Yeah, up front it gets heated. So um, that's Hannah. Marcus is a cat that's in kidney failure that we've been giving fluids to. Uh, uh, we recently ran blood work again, and he's slowly getting worse. He's still quite comfortable and happy uh, in the shelter, but he's... Except when you put him in his cage and play. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't stay in there. He greets us every morning. Yeah, he opens the door and gets it. <laughs> he knows how to flip the latch to unlock it. Yeah. Wow. Doesn't matter what cage. But eventually we're probably going to be faced with the same thing with Marcus. So. It sounds like we can do the same thing if necessary. Well, we probably Hopefully have more we'll warning. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's you know, failure. So at some point. Still working on the surgery table, still waiting for the dental machine. Any word on that? No. Okay. 
I think the last we heard, Joyce indicated sometime after Thanksgiving. It sounded like it would be this year. She felt pretty certain, but um, we can check in again. I don't remember who it was coming from, even, but we'll ask. It was her dentist. It was her dentist. It was her dentist? Yeah. Oh, okay. And I think she's leaving to head south for the winter. She's not leaving till January. Okay. I think. She adopted Gladdy, did you know? Did she? Oh, she did? Mm -hmm. <gasps> wow. Finally. That's great. Yeah. I saw Maggie today. Really? I brought her in for an exam. I just love her. She's her tail chaser. Oh, I've never seen her do that. She's just, yeah. Oh, Maggie? Yeah. She's, yeah. she's oh. wired, that dog. She's, yeah. she's spunky and old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anything else? No, I think that's it. I think that's it. Thank you. The financial report. We held a finance committee meeting on November 6th. Uh, we have one item that continues to be unresolved, so Marta, I'd like to ask you for a little bit of help with that. And I may have already emailed about this. The lease on units two and three expired on April 30th. Yeah. My, I think, probably still thinks that we went month to month from then, but it doesn't specify that in the lease, and we do absolutely have to have it written in the lease uh, to send in with our tax return next year. So I'm just wondering, Marta, if you could pick up that communication. Yes. And I want to make sure that Mike also has Matt's contact information. I gave it to him personally. Okay, perfect. JJ, who's here tonight, attended the Finance Committee meeting and reviewed our investments with us. JJ is a certified financial fund. Thank you. Licensed for 20 years. Okay. Um, she's going to present some information here in just a minute to help us decide what to do with the money that we have in investments right now. We reviewed the, reviewed the first draft of the 2013 budget, recommended some changes. I did get through the second draft. I think I only sent it out to the rest of the finance committee meeting. And um, it's not quite ready to put forth for approval but I'll talk a bit later as we're uh, talking in the closed session about the um, payroll budgeting and whatnot. Deb is going to start researching lower cost credit card processors. And we talked about recruiting one additional director to obtain a gaming license to help with the raffles. We had originally talked to Marta about that, but I think Deb and I at least are under the thought that a director should do that. We originally wanted to make all of the fundraising events and activities volunteer or as much as possible and to not tax the staff and to also not have any costs coming out of our fundraising. So if the other directors will keep that in mind, think about if you might be willing to do that. So what's, what do you have to, to get a license for you have to? You can actually take a free course for, with the Secretary of State, and I have the link. And so you know me the link so I can just read it and, and make an okay. informed decision. Okay, <laughs> yeah, actually, I'll just send that out to everybody. Okay. Can, can I ask, does it need to be a director? No, actually, no, it can be a volunteer. So can we put the word out on the volunteers that, um, you know, to the next volunteer communication or something? That, I mean, it's not going to hurt to have two or three or four people who are qualified, right? We just have to pay for their license, but I don't think it's that awfully. Uh, so how much? Twenty, 20 bucks or something. Yeah. How much was it? Was it like twenty bucks? It, it's yeah, very nominal. Oh, I thought it was more than that. If you go down and take the course, uh -huh. it costs. But if you do the online, the course is free, and I don't know what the license. Yeah, I was just thinking, like thinking what Cheryl's renewal license cost was. It may be sixty-five or something, but I was thinking it was not quite as nominal as twenty. But so, I mean, that's the only thing. Well, we might find someone who already has. Or a gaming license who would be willing to act as okay. our second manager or something. So what kind of time requirement would be required of that person with regard to our fundraising activities? I mean, is this a, something that we're drawing them into a... Um, no, it's uh, right now the only one we do is the raffle. Okay. It's the only gaming license. So I would do it a couple hours a month for the first five months of the year. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. To be there. Yeah, I mean, really, all they'd have to do is, I would, if I were in their shoes, I'd want to look at the tickets where everything's sure. disclosed to make sure that the, your license number is correct, whatever, and, um, you know, filling out the report. And, and it's possible it's not. I mean, it could be as little as zero hours because Cheryl's still involved. The idea is just to have a backup. God forbid Cheryl gets hit by a train. You know, something like that, something unfortunate. We have to have that for the raffle to be. Right, the person has to be present, uh, I think, with their license when the draw occurs. So, so this is right next to the road. Okay. Things are bad. Okay. It's a good thing it's a plane crash. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. It sure gets amnesia. So, Martha, do you already have that link, or do you want me to? I'll just copy you on the email. As well. if, you, if you could, that would be okay. great. Thank you. Our restricted funds report, we have 24-12-62 for Foster, Pedicaid, the surgery table, and a windshield. The money that we received for the windshield, Marta wrote the folks back and asked them if we can redirect that money because we got a windshield donated. And we have 26 113 30 in the shelter capital fund. Operating reserve report, this will look very different next year. We don't actually have our operating reserve set aside the way that we plan on it, but we will by the end of next month. And the budget versus actual, if you look at the following page, you'll see where we are, which is looking really good. The big news, of course, Deb gave you the figure of a little over $10,000 profit on the silent auction. That's over 50% above what we did last year. That was a tremendous increase. The shelter program fees are again considerably higher than we had budgeted, thanks to Martin and Nicole Hartford. Uh, oh, the expenses were showing coming in under budget because I had inadvertently budgeted for three peri pay periods versus two. However, November will have three pay periods, and I only budgeted for two. So <laughs> we're going to see a wash first. Yes, for next month. <laughs> And again, the monthly expensing of the donated supplies and materials that you see is the last income line item coming in at twelve fifty four fifty. That also gets expensed every month in various expense accounts below. So a lot of times that's why you see the expenses look higher than what we had budgeted. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, can I interrupt for one second? I'm done, so you can talk. Okay. I really, really like this on one page, but can I ask for one? more simple change. Can you number each of the lines so that when you're talking through the different stuff, because as you're talking, I'm like, oh. where is she looking on oh, this? Yeah. If you just put a number and say, if you look at line number yep. seven for sales, you'll see that it's <coughs> actual versus budgeted is different, something like that. Anyways. And can you tell me again, what was the, the bottom? Monthly expenses of donated supplies. Where is that in the expenses? It's broken out in the actual expense accounts. So when we get in postage and office paper, or got copy paper, that will be expensed under G&A. Okay. Um, the animal food that we get is expensed under shelter expenses. So it's all broken out specifically based on what it was that was donated. Okay. But it comes in in one line item under the income. That's the okay. Yeah. Yeah, I got that for budget questions, but good. Okay, okay. thank you. So, Overall, you can see we're doing far better than what we budgeted, and even better than we did last year. So, we take off that uh, third pay period. Yes. We're still ahead. Yeah. Yeah, that actually, yeah. <laughs> so, are there any more questions about the reports? I, I have a question. I'll be um, so on the lease that is expired on units two and three, yes, they expired on April thirtieth. Yes. Um, do we have a copy of the lease at the shelter? Yes, and I believe. It I want to make this as easy as possible for Mike, so that he can just sign something. I believe it's <coughs> on the computer as well, but I will just see <coughs> the attachment. That would be great. So specifically, what we want him to say is that effective May first. Our lease on units two and three is month to month yes. at the same rate. Yes. Okay. And it's of this year. Uh, yes, we're back. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. So, unless there are any other questions, 
JJ made a very colorful analysis for us. And she's going to talk a little bit about our options. <coughs> It's really more because in order for me to give you the unofficial advice, I have to understand your situation. So those on the finance committee, if you could look it over and, and verify whether it's correct or not, <coughs> we can do that afterwards. I just wanted you to have this. Okay. Um, based on what Wendy said about operating reserves, I assume that means you're going to increase what you're holding in cash as the, the uh, guidelines show for like three months, which would be about 45000 Yeah. So most of that's what's on your fidelity money market at this point, added to what we're talking in operating reserves about twenty two thousand. So what that leaves to invest is between fifteen and twenty thousand as a rough estimate. The purpose of the chart is to show you right now that's really part of your investments because operating reserves are still part of your total investments. So you are heavy in cash and you'll remain heavy in cash on purpose. So what we need to discuss is how much risk you want to take with the fifteen to twenty thousand dollars, and that's not something that's written into your um, guidelines, other than in very general terms with things like a maximum of sixty percent equity. So what I did was I gave you a little chart, and not chart, this, <laughs> that shows the different possible investment portfolios that that money could go into that would meet the regulations and the bylaws and the guidelines. And I think it's appropriate for the board to make a decision on which of these you'd rather follow. They start at the top with the most conservative investment. And the pie chart gives you an example. For instance, the 80% bonds, 20% stocks is very conservative. You look to the right, the average annual return is what you could expect to get. That's a historical return. It's not a guarantee of future results. <laughs> um, these came off of the Vanguard website because I think the Finance Committee agreed that something without cost, no load, and very low management fees made sense, so I think they're headed in that direction. And I can make specific um, recommendations once we know what kind of allocation to use. My thought is you probably want to stay in the top third just because at some point you might have to dip into it for operating reserves if enough income's not coming in to cover your expenses. But that's it's certainly up to you guys to decide. Questions? With the interest rates really low, um, if interest rates go up and bonds go down. That's correct. And equity will move the opposite direction, which is why you want a combination of equity and bonds. That's one reason I'm not so sure you want 80% bonds, but uh, well, you may not, but much. remember when you're when you're looking at putting this money in mm -hmm. in order to invest it, it's it's a gamble, it's just like going up playing the casino, you want to look at it as at least five to ten years. You don't want to have something in there that's going to come out in a year. So the next five to ten years, hopefully all those things will equalize. Any other questions? So you'd be looking for a variety of funds that fall in, fall into these categories, or you're looking for Most one likely or? between two to four funds four would be it because of the amount you have to invest. The minimum on most of Vanguard's funds is $1,000 to $3,000, so at the most you could probably do five, but I would recommend keeping it smaller yeah. rather than larger for the you of. <laughs> and they have very good funds that are balanced funds where you can do a lot of it in one fund. But we need to have the overall oops, overall guideline first. Do you have thoughts to start the discussion? Well, to me, eighty twenty is 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 too high. Too right. conservative, you mean? Oh yeah, so I'm looking at yeah, the other way. Forty yeah. sixty is right. I'm stock 40, is yeah. the most equity you could have right. involved. So so. As far as we, we do expect that this money will sit there for five years and, the, and that whatever we have in cash reserves will. We expect that we will not have to touch that. Okay. Does anyone have any investment experience on the board? No, that's why JJ's here. <laughs> 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 the amount of risk you're 
you don't need to accept this. It's right. okay to decide for you. Right. I know I'm not heavy in stocks of my own investments yeah. right now. Um, I'm still waiting to see what happens, but I'm more of a... I'm kind of middle of the road. You know, don't want to, definitely don't want to go with a couple of higher risks. and definitely don't want to go with something where we're not really getting any return. Just go middle of the road. I'm like a 60-40 person. <laughs> <clears throat> but I also have no idea how my money's doing, so I could be all wrong. <laughs> I guess there's balance funds that will meet some of these criteria too, right? There are, yes. There are a couple of that I've looked at in Vanguard that would be appropriate. They're not exactly 60-40 or 50-50, which is why you might have to use a second one to supplement. At least that way you don't have to worry about buying individual bonds. And I'm definitely for having it, having yeah. at least, probably having three and no more than three funds, but also not all in one fund. Right. Let me explain why I say one can do most of it. Um, one of the funds that they have, the balanced fund, is actually a combination of several of their funds in one. Mm -hmm. So it diversifies by uh -huh. buying different Vanguard funds. And then all it does is change oh, okay. them slightly depending on market movements and the manager's choices. So you can have one do everything and agree that that's the right allocation. I'm suspecting though that we won't end up with that exact allocation right. as your answer. So you'd have to supplement in order to come to the percentages that are mm -hmm. that are the goal. I'm just, I'm, yeah. No, no, I'm just trying to understand what it is that we're trying to decide right now. Um, we're we're basically trying. We're our goal is to choose one of these okay. tonight, so we can have our investments taken care of by December thirty first. Okay. Is our operating reserve? I'm just struggling with the numbers because I thought we had more than twenty thousand for the operating reserve. This is today. This is a snapshot of what we have today. That's what's in our checking account. What was in our checking account when she was here the other night? And our operating, operating reserve is three months worth of. It will be forty-five thousand dollars. Okay, I thought I heard of forty-five million earlier. So yeah. really, it's forty-five because I agree these numbers within a couple thousand. It's over here in total cash. It'll be the forty-five plus the twenty-six for the building fund, right? The right. right. building fund is not operating. Okay. We will have forty-five thousand in building over fund. here. I'll revise this once the decision is made. It won't make sense. This is as of October thirty-first. What everything was. Right, and I know we haven't changed that much since October thirty-first. Actually, her report is October thirty-first on that one. Um, I'm trying to remember what it was when we were talking about that we're going to be investing. How much? It's between fifty and twenty thousand. Okay. That's not right. Of the sixty thousand, we the and I wasn't sure if this was going to be deposit during the sales auction, which is why I say 15 to 20. Um, yeah, and it, most of it was in there by October 31st. So I still don't understand, how does this relate to this? We're talking about going from this to the 60-40 or the... No, no, sorry. So the first page, she was doing an analysis of everything that we have right now. Right. What we're going to be doing is liquidating all of the funds, the American Mutual and the Oppenheimers. We're liquidating those, and we already liquidated what we have. So we're talking these. about the blue and the yellow part of this pie. Yes. Yeah. There is okay. some green in those funds, though, too. But very yes. Okay. All right. And we're so we're talking about how we're going to distribute that part of the pie. Yes. Okay. The, it's just a small amount that we have left after we meet our operating reserve criteria, which is to have at least three months worth. Which is in an FDIC. This, around seventy-three percent, and is going to remain that, right? Uh, no, it's forty-five thousand, and then the other twenty-six thousand of that seventy-three percent is the shelter fund that has to be in an FDIC insured account as well. Okay. So after we take out from the whole thing, the monies that have to be in FDIC insured accounts, we have about 15,000 left, 15 to 20, that we can have in investments um, according to the investment policy that we passed earlier this year. So she's giving us options of what to do with that fifteen or twenty thousand. So this is what model we want to use 
with that leftover money, what okay. right. our risk model. And Dr. Dave, you're right. The, the, the graph will look very similar. When we're done, it will still have lots and lots of green. It will just have the blue and the yellow a little bit differently, probably. Okay. So, yeah, what we're trying to determine is how much risk we want to um, take with that fifteen to 20000 that we have left. And that's money that I wouldn't expect we're ever going to have to touch. Um, I think we should be looking at it as an income producing opportunity. So, so the current picture, the blue and the yellow, tells me that we're, we're in a more high risk than what I have stated. I want to be in the middle of the road. That's exactly right. Historically, yes, with the funds that we've owned in the investment portion. And it's a good thing you didn't see where we were about oh. to What I heard, and, and I'm just trying to help you narrow it down not to leave you, okay, was that maybe middle of the road makes more sense, so you should focus on the two, these two, either 60% bonds, 40% equity, or 50-50. Does that seem to make sense to everyone? That those two might be the choices? That makes sense to me. <laughs> So I suggest and that, that and that will number sixty four kind of person that just think that's yeah, I agree. I don't think you're familiar with the market. Yes. 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 Yes
that's, um, well, you know, we're kind of down to the wire. You know, we've got about six weeks to accomplish all of this. So, um, yeah, if you want to email it, email that for Yeah, me. I mean, just call on I mean, it. says, on the website says member update DIC, but when I look at the accounts, it doesn't specifically say that accounts that these DIC insured, so I need to call and okay. confirm that. Because I think that's the one we're talking about for the shelter capital, right? Okay. And it ties into your existing checking accounts. So transfer back oh, wait, for forth. shelter and operating. Okay. You can do up to six transfers a month back and forth. Oh, perfect. But you can still have to ask them. Okay. Hey, JJ. On the fidelity tax free plan market, that's the same thing there. It should be pre protected right now if we want to liquidate that. That's what's going into your operating reserves. So yeah, right. that so was excellent. It is already liquidated. It's just that's our money market. We just have to get a check. Okay. So we're not, when we look at this, where we're really exposed with the market right now, this higher yeah, sure. yeah, which really, all in all, 16,000, 62. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> but again, if we look at as long as we're ready and prepared, then when we sell it, we go right in. At least, you know, it's a wash if you're going to do all of the equity. Yeah, if you're not, I'm, though, right, it can make, it make a difference. So we may need to hold it for a little until things swoop, and then bring it back. Well, that's we have not, a goal, so we don't we'll be able to do that. Well, well, we can talk about that. Yeah. I mean, if, if yeah. we're going to take a loss, and just it make doesn't a goal. make sense to do that. Right. You know, we just need to move to hold that portion for a little bit longer. Right. Yeah. right. So we probably need to start really looking at the prices on this. I think we can. Yeah. Yeah, we, we know what the. We can go online and check the pricing of this. Yeah. Okay. We'll watch that too. Good. Thank you. Thank you, JJ. No, I'm good. Okay. Um, open business. There's the changes to the director application. Which is still open. Why is it open? Changing the wording so that it was more clear then. Right, I thought we were going to just change that one sentence. Right. Like, oh, Nobody had suggested Nobody a change. Motioned it. I thought I suggested a change. I don't know if we ever okay. had a motion. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I had something. Let me. Let me just read the email with you. Yeah. yeah. And then we need somebody to make a motion. Second it. Okay. Make the So, Ellen, when you said that you can make a motion. Oh, I said the change and make a motion. Okay. Change and. Change for this okay. Change and make a Okay, and the euthanasia policy had sent out a draft or link to the draft of that. Um, got a comment back from Marta, which I really added to it. This one's no rush since we have to wait till the members' meeting to change the policy. Right. But we have to all be in agreement on the wording before we. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Okay. And we used to talk about the camera for the thrift store and the technology report. Yeah. So that's it for open business. Does anybody have any new business? Any new business? I don't know if it's counts new business. One thing that I've noticed going on at the shelter market is um, those back kennels, there are no cooking things to be found. I am hunting them down every Saturday, and I never have enough. That I don't know if they're just, you know, the things you put in the, you to know, you put the, the game, you put the thing, yeah. Um, okay. And I can't, uh, Bob and I have been at a loss for two weeks. I'll, I'll tell you where they are. Okay. They're in there. Okay, because no one really has seen them last week. You weren't around last week, and things were a little hectic, so they're really where they were. All right. Okay, call the meeting to close at 7.30 now. Thank you.